my dear brothers and sisters, we have been honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has gifted us our children. One of the biggest bounties of Allah for us is our children. After Iman, after Islam, it is one of the most important bounties of Allah, gift of Allah towards us. I know many of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given children, three, four, five, six, seven, we are very happy. And we think getting children is easy, it's not a big issue. But those who did not get children yet, they are married now five years, 10 years, 12, 15 years, ask them what they are feeling every day and night. Oh Allah, when you give us a child in our family, they are praying to Allah every day and night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of those parents who are married sometimes ago and not getting children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them children uh, granted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are a biggest name because you know our experience. When our baby is born, slowly, slowly smiling, first day we see baby is smiling, we are so excited, so happy. And then slowly, slowly when the child is saying, uh, calling dad and mom, oh, we are more happy now. He's calling me, calling mom. When they are started talking a little bit, one or two words, we are excited again. When they're walking step by step, one step walks, one step, they fell. We are again see, mashallah, good progress. We talk to them, you know, we, we, we talk to many things to them. Nothing is important, but we would like to talk to them. So this is the ni'mah you can see. This name on, is not a toy to play with only, or to decorate your house with this. This brings huge task and amana. That is the main thing we need to consider. This is amana, trust of Allah. We're entrusted to bring them up. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahalikum nara. Biggest amana to save ourselves and these children from the hellfire, from Jahannam, that they are writers, grown up as a writer's children, not committing sin and going to Jahannam. May Allah save all of our children. Amen. So that is the amana he will be asking us. He has given them a good fitra, good nature. Everybody, every child is born with a right fitra. So these children are one of the biggest bounty of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran. Wealth and children are but adornment of the worldly life. But the enduring good deeds are better to you, Lord, for reward and better for one's hope. So just to have this adornment is not good enough how they are good for us in this dunya and even in hereafter. They will be so useful for us once we die because they will be doing dua for us. When our old deeds are cut off after death, we cannot pray to Raka anything, but our children will be, when they are righteous, they are pious, they will be making dua for us. And that will reach to us. That will reach to us. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, a man will see his, his place in Jannah is, is, is promoted, is upgraded every day, upgraded, upgraded. Then he will say, man will say, oh Allah, how come? It's my Jannah is continuously upgraded while I am already dead. He said, the answer will be coming to him, because of your righteous children's dua, you are getting promotion in Jannah. Everybody of us need that. And that will be not happening automatically, naturally, just will happen now. That we need to earn by our making effort to achieve that level. That is a fitra as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to them. They are born in a very uh, pure fitra. You know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Every newborn baby 
is born on the pure character, pure nature. Not having any kind of shirk or kufr, or any kind of sin, or any kind of immorality. Born with this pure status, without anything wrong. That should be protected, preserved. Upon which he has created all people. Every, bo every newborn baby is created on that nature, that status. No change should there be in the creation of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the, in the uh, uh, Quran, that is a correct religion, but most of the people do not know. So later on, okay, what happened? The people, the parents may make them Muslims, or the Christian will make them their children. Christians are Jews, their children. Jews or fire worshippers will make their children a fire worshipper. So parents' religion, parents' character, parents' culture will, will make them, will shape them. That even the so-called Muslim, parents are so-called Muslim, there are no Islam, children will be having that kind of Islam. The parents are serious, sincere to Allah, Allah will make the children like the parents. So that's why we need to have this, to earn it, to achieve it by making effort and taking that responsibility very seriously. Uh, and then this amana it came in another hadith. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. So, fal imamu alladhi ala al-nasi ra'in wa huwa mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. And والرجل راعين على أهل بيته وهو مسؤول عن رعيته والمرأة راعية على أهل بيتها بيت زوجها وهي مسؤولة عنهم وعبد الرجل راعين على مال سيده وهو مسؤول عنه على فكلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته All of you are guardians and are responsible for your subjects. The ruler is a guardian. And leader is a guardian and responsible for his subjects. The man is a guardian of his family. The woman is guardian in her husband's house and responsible for her words, subjects, children. A servant is guardian of his master's property and responsible for his word. So all of you are guardians and are responsible for your subjects. So you can see, it's one of the biggest duty of us. Biggest responsibility. I know many of you have important things to do. You have a big job, time consuming. You need to focus. You have business. You are so busy with that. You attend many conferences, meetings, weekend, evening. So busy man, important person. But you're, all these are in one side, put in another side, responsibility towards your children. And that's one of the biggest one is that responsibility. And one of the good things Allah has given to every human being, a natural protection of us, a very good protection, that is al-haya, the shyness. Shyness is a ni'mah. It puts us, it, uh, it, it protects us from many things wrong to do. That's why in hadith of Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-hayā'u shu'batun minal iman. The haya, the shyness, is a branch of iman. In another hadith, Al-hayā'u minal iman. For modesty is a part of iman. So to preserve the haya, you're preserving your iman. Preserving haya, shyness in your child's life, you're preserving his from committing many things sinful. So anything is is a challenge to their haya, their modesty, their shyness. That should not be allowed. We should do our best to stop that. And this itself, even without Islamic guidance, naturally, a non-Muslim could have this shyness. Fitratan, naturally, gift from Allah to him. And that's said in hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna mimma adraka nasu min kalamin buwatil ula, the Prophet Sallallahu said, one of the sayings of the early prophets, which the people have got even in Jahili Arabia, 
time of ignorance even, that was known to the people that if you don't feel ashamed, do whatever you like. You can do anything if you are not ashamed, if you have no shyness. So the keeping, preserving the shyness is one of the important tasks. And so, in hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu said, لا أحد أغير من الله ولذلك حرم الفواحش ما ظهر منها ما بطن. None is more self-respecting than Allah. And it is because of this that he has prohibited abominable acts, both visible and invisible, anything filthy, anything uh, shamelessness, anything sinful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like that. So we have to preserve this sense in our children's lives. In another hadith, a similar message, Inna Allah yagaru ghayratullahi an yati al mu'minu ma haram Allah. Allah has a sense of ghayra, and Allah's sense of ghayra is provoked when a believer does, not, does something which Allah has prohibited. Now, something is in the society happening. Our children, this, this ni'mah, this protection of modesty and shyness is, is, is becoming shaky, is challenged. What kind of challenge they're facing? Through internet, mobile phone, social media, pornography, everywhere. Peer pressure, wrong friends. And now moreover, in the school, when we're sending them, they're learning good education, alhamdulillah. But nowadays, day by day, it's some of the education is coming by the name of PSHE or SRE, Sex and Relationship Education. This is one thing, it's a big challenge to the shyness taken away and giving them some sort of direction to the, to the to, to, to sometimes it could lead them to the wrong direction. As you know, it's a very important area of the life. Very young children should not be taught this. When they are in the reaching you know, age of adulthood, there is some principle in Islam, Quran has it guides us how to teach that area of the life. However, the society is, is introducing this subject which is sometimes is not very age appropriate. In the primary school, do they need that? In the secondary school, what area they need to learn? That will be some, some kind of well thought syllabus. But what is happening at the moment, as you know, SRE6 uh, and education, uh, relationship education is not yet compulsory. You can withdraw from yourself from the school, from the class. This option is still there. The government would like to close it from next year. And bringing some other area, uh, the, what is the sexual relationship in the, in the Muslim life with a man and woman with the marriage? This is in our religion. Anything else is not allowed in the religion. But this kind of, if we don't control this, that SRE will lead them to, to the varieties of the things which will be challenged to keep their iman, akhlaq, morality, character in their life.